Hello and welcome to episode four of Healthy Knitting. I'm Rosie, I'm your host, and today is August 30th, 2013. Uh, we are recording using my computer again. Uh, I really wanna use the camera because it's so much easier. And unfortunately, it's still blurry. I can't really figure out how to make it not blurry. So here we are. So let's get started. I want to thank all of the new um, people who joined the group. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you over there. And I also want to thank a podcast viewer for submitting a recipe. I did try it. It is fantastic. It's Big Peaches, and we'll review that a little bit later. So thank you so much. And um, really, feel free to post good, healthy recipes or any tips that you have, things that you want to share. Just let everybody know what's, what's going on, what works for you. Uh, can be helpful. You learn a lot that way. I learned about these big peaches and I didn't realize how good they would. They'd be fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry, looking over at something else. Oh, we have a kitty joining us today. This is Natalia. She's the one that joins us in the kitchen. But here she is. She's kind of sleepy today. She's a, she doesn't like to get up too early. <laughs> so she's tired out. Um, okay, so new and good. Um, Oh, these are the segments we're gonna have new and good on and off the needles up next really <laughs> a review tips and a recipe so let's get started uh, new and good new and good I did have a friend come over uh, for a couple days this week and I got to I took him to a place um, called uh, walkway over the Hudson. Now I lived here for quite a while and I have not gone over this and I'm not even sure when it was built. Oh, now she finds a bag. There's yarn in there. <laughs> um, and everybody's always told me you gotta go do it and I keep meaning to go in the fall because it'd be really beautiful to get a nice bird's eye view literally of the river and the sides of the river have mountains and the trees are really beautiful here. I live in, in a New York where the trees change color so they look very beautiful in the fall and I hadn't done it so we did that and that was really nice we also went for another hike I like hiking I like walking I like being outside in nature I know people knit and walk but um, I'm not really the best at that I can talk and knit I almost said I was gonna talk and walk yeah I think everybody can do that <laughs> I can I can talk and knit but sometimes my knitting suffers a little bit um, anyway, so that was really fun. That was one of the things that's new and good. And then the other new and good thing is that I, my yarn store was having a sale. And I walk past this yarn store every time that I go to knitting on Thursday nights. And they're open late, conveniently, for all of us to go to knitting so that we can um, get stuff. So thank you very much to Clay Wood and Cotton. Oh, that's another one. I think I told you my other, we have a couple around here. So Claywood and Cotton um, has now expanded to having yarn and they're on Main Street and Beacon and it's a cute little shop. And they're having a sale on Eco Cloud. So I bought three skeins of this because back in my head, I had put in my queue that I needed three skeins to make something. And I couldn't remember what it was when I was in the yarn shop and I'm like, oh, I just need three skeins. When I got home, I realized the pattern that I had kind of paired this up with is called the Springtime Bannet bandit but I don't think I'm gonna make that now so now I'm looking for what can I do with three skeins of eco cloud I'm almost ready to go get another one um, 10 bucks is not a bad price for eco cloud I don't know if you've ever worked with this but really it does feel like a cloud it is so super soft and smushy it's um, undyed merino and undyed baby alpaca so there's no dyes no I don't want to say no chemicals in the processing I don't know how they process but obviously there's just nothing in here except for you know the good old-fashioned animal fleeces so I've made a cowl out of this before and I gave it away and I almost want to go grab a white one and make one for me too as it's so lovely I really love this stuff it's a chain construction it's kind of like the chain construction cotton I'm working on right now so anyway this is the worsted weight so three skeins got to figure that out I've been searching my queue on my queue in Ravelry, I don't know if any of you have bothered to look, but it is insane. I don't even know how many pages I have. Probably like 70-something pages. But it's not everything I really want to make. I have my queue kind of used as my favorites, too, even though I favorite stuff. I favorite stuff for different reasons. But I never go back and look at them. And because favorites is, unless they've changed it. Oh, that was another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm writing this down because I will forget. Oh, you know what? We are going to have a spinning section then. Okay, so anyway, um, 
I don't know if they change it, but it's just so much easier to look for things in my queue. I can sort, I've got everything tagged, crazy tags with things that I need so that I'll know what I've got. And I tag things that I need to buy and I'll tag things that I have. And so I know what I've got. Um, and I don't necessarily always want to make that project, but I'll look at it and be like, I like a piece of that and I might want to use that in something else. So it's, they're really, I'm never going to obviously make that many items, but with the amount of yarn I have, I probably could for God's sake. Like I really don't need to buy new yarn, but every once in a while it's kind of fun, right? Right. The other thing, so I'm like off on tangents already. Sorry. My brain works in tangents. <laughs> um, it's kind of how I operate. You may have noticed. Um, the other thing I bought was the Noro um, Knitting Magazine Spring Summer 2013. There was another Noro Magazine in there that I wanted, but I refrained because I'm probably not going to make, well, I would, let's put it this way. I would like to make a lot of the items that are in there, but um, I can't, I want to say I can't afford the Noro yarn because then that's putting myself in, I don't want to spend the money on that much. You know, Noro is pretty expensive and I love Noro, but you know, if it's on sale, sure, I'll pick some up or if I can buy it in bulk, like um, if you buy it from Webs, you get a big discount on yarn, but um, I already bought the yarn for that bag that I made from the other magazine and then I needed another ball and then I needed more and then, you know, like these Noro projects, they get really expensive. So it has to be something that I really, really, really want and I'm really, really going to make. Then I'll put the money into it, but um, I'm not going to buy the yarn and throw it in my stash. As I have um, Little Knits is another place where you can get good... I'm going to have to write this down. Little Knits is a good place um, where you can get big bulks of quantities of Noro. Sometimes they'll have these big sales. And I bought enough to make... Um, it, so it was a blanket. And it did make it. It's it's actually in the closet, staying away from cats um, to keep it safe. But um, I would that relic it would have cost twice as much. So it makes it more affordable when you can buy these bigger quantities at a lesser price. Because Nora was kind of pricey, you know. And I would love to just be able to have my budget be where I could make every single Nora garment that I want. But it's not going to happen. So I didn't get it. But I might get it later on. Who knows? I will review this magazine at the end. Or not at the end, but the end of the knitting section. Um, so yeah, that's it for... No, because I think I want to put this in here. Did you know, <laughs> because I'm so behind, Ravelry actually allows you now to upload photos from your computer, which is fantastic because I don't know if you've ever noticed, but I have no pictures in my Ravelry pages because I don't like to use Flickr and I don't like to use all those other things. I like my pictures where they are. They're easy to use on my computer, blah, 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 blah. I'm technologically a little bit challenged. Obviously, I can't even get my camera to work right. It's sitting right there. I'm just trying to make it work. But anyway, um, yeah, so now I can start taking pictures. And I do actually have a lot of knitting pictures in my um, computer. But I've not uploaded them because then I would have to go upload them to Flickr and then upload Flickr to the kitten. I was like, really? I don't have the patience for all that. I really don't. So. Yay for that. Nobody clued me in. I just found it the other day when I was looking through another segment we're going to talk about in the spending section. So, hey. Thanks, Casey and Jess. You guys are awesome. Okay, on and off the needles. Yay. Guess what? It's done. It's finished. It's completely, all of the ends are woven in and it's wearable. I am going to put it on, and it worked a little bit better when I stood up in front of my um, camera camera, so I'm going to slide the couch back a little bit. Hang on. I'm going to go out. Oh. <laughs> I need to learn how to, how to edit. Um, so, can you see? My jacket is finished. Um, I love the back. I'm, just, I'm hoping you can see that. My sleeves are a little bit long, um, and I like them a little bit long because I tend to make things that um, wind up being too short, I think I've told you, and then the next thing I know they're like up to here, and that's not good. Um, this does look a little bit better. Okay. Wrong side. God. I'm really, I get a little twisted around with this camera. <laughs> now I'm 
like bending it all out of shape. So it really, it's a side. I'm wearing a bulky shirt underneath here, so this is not helpful. I will get that straight one of these days. So anyway, it's very nice, it's super warm, and I'm sure it's gonna get a lot of use when the weather gets a little colder. Right now, it's on the way off. I need to get it off, okay. So, that is finished. I'm gonna pull you up a little closer now. Okay, sorry about the skirt shot there. Rides up when I sit down. Um, Okay, so that's finished, and I well, now my cat's sleeping on my project. Honey, you're so cute. Um, the Vogue Knitting Sideways Jacket, that's what I'm working on right now. And this is all the yarn I have left. I knew I would be close. <laughs> and I still have to do all of this top yoke and on the back as well. So I do have white in this yarn. Now my hair's all screwed up. I just have to find it and I think that's what I'm going to do. So here is the back and I wound up, it called for six pattern repeats, but as you can tell that's that's pretty big. Like that's big enough for the back. So I only did five. And then it was interesting too because the front had two and a half. So I, I did check the errata and there's errata for it, but um not for that panel. So I didn't want it to be huge. I mean, I know it's a boxy sweater, but it doesn't need to be that big. And here's one side. Oh, that's the back again. I think she's sitting on it. And here is the other side. So what I need to do now is find the white that I have and you pick up all along the edge and you make the yoke and then you make the other side put them together and do the back and then join the shoulders. And then also, I do have enough yarn, I don't know if you can tell, but right here, there's a little placket thing for the buttons. Now, I'm in a dilemma because this part is going to be white and this part is going to be the brown. So what do I do with this placket? Do I move it down? Do I make it half and half? really not sure what to do. This is going to be a little bit of an experiment, but I want to just get it done because it's already August 30th. We only have like another month of decent weather to wear this. So that is my next thing to figure out. Find the white yarn, finish this, and figure out the buttonhole band pocket thing. Oh, I don't have any socks to show you. <laughs> You know, this happens to me all the time too. Obviously, I just talked about my queue. I have 74 or something pages worth of things in my queue. And I watched the Knit Girls the other day and Leslie had started this cowl called the Willow Cowl. So what do I do? I go to knitting and I cast this on. <laughs> Because I, I have a project that's I'm going to talk about in a second that's related to this. So there is a, there is a reason. Um, I am using the Mad Tosh DK, the leftovers from the color affection shawl that I made. And these are the colors. And I, I weighed it. I have 106 grams. There is 116, I think, in the skein. I'm going to show you, but I gotta wait, um, in a regular full skein. So there is quite a lot of, of yarn left over. So I thought one skein might make this cowl. So right now I'm at the point, I started on size four for, it calls for a, um, a Pico edge. And so you fold it over. And so instead of having really bulky, bulky, I did the inside one on size four needles. And then I switched to size five. And then now I'm at the point where I'm connecting them together. But I really needed to see what I was doing, so I had to stop. So this is as far as I've gotten so far on this little cowl. And I haven't decided whether, I started with this on the inside. I don't have a lot of this. This is the least amount of yarn that I have. I have the most of these two. So I'm debating, do I want to do stripes? The way this thing falls, it's kind of interesting because it's got, um, it's kind of like puckery and it's decreased. So 
it fits your face nicely. Uh, it's a little looser down here. It comes up and it kind of stands up on itself. And so I'm not sure if I do the different colors. If I do one color on the inside, is it going to show? So this is an experiment, but really the experiment for this is to see if I have enough yarn. I know I've seen some people have done this project in Madeline Tosh DK, Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light, sorry. Um, and they've had one skein. Um, I thought I read where someone had to do less repeats, blah, 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 but then I went to go look again and I couldn't find it. So I don't know what I was looking at. But um, and that's in my little homemade bag. I need to make more of these. I was supposed to make a bunch of these for Christmas presents last year and it didn't happen, so I need to kind of get on the ball because Christmas is coming again. It does that every year, doesn't it? And um, <laughs> I wanted to give, it, give them as gifts to my knit group people. So now I'm still behind a gift from last year. Uh, anyway, so that is what I'm working on. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because I think I told you I bought Oh, I hope you can see the color. This is another Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light, and it's called Terrarium, and it's this beautiful, let me open it, because it, it is green, it's, it's foresty green, but it has these beautiful pops of, like these little light colors in there. I am doing a really horrible job, I am sorry you guys. This, I like using the camera camera because it doesn't reverse it until it actually shows it, and here with it reversing it, I just get so mixed up. Anyway, um, I have a friend who loves green and I wanna make this as a gift because just giving this person the yarn, she, and she can knit, but she doesn't always knit for herself and she's always knitting and doing things for everybody else but herself. So I think I'm going to make the willow cowl with this for her. She doesn't wear hats. Um, she's made a pair of mittens this past year and that's the only pair of mittens that she has. She doesn't really wear mittens, but I've noticed that she will wear things around her neck. And I was going to make a, a shawl, and then I'm like, well, a scarf, and then, you know what, I think this might be the best use of this yarn for her. I think she'll get some wear out of this. So I'm experimenting with that, and then the next one I'm going to make is this one. Because it's not, it's not that hard. It seems like easy, easy knitting, so I can do this in my sleep. So. That's always a plus, because right now I just don't need too many challenging things going on with everything else going on with me. So that was up next. Um, I don't have any spinning to show, but the information I wanted to share was um, on Dragonfly Stores. She had mentioned that the uh, spinning and hand spun section is now available for everyone. It's, not, it's no longer in its test form which is great because I was in the test part, but it wouldn't work. And I was going back and forth with the people from Ravelry and it just, you know, it, I never could get it to where it would go, oh, crappers, we need, we've sent an email to Casey. And I just, I was getting a little frustrated because I wanted to use it. I saw other people using it and I'm like, oh, that'd be really fun. And um, again, I don't have any pictures of all of my things that I'd like to put in Ravelry now that I know I can with uploading pictures from my computer, that's fantastic. That's just gonna make things so much easier. So I wanna start putting my spinning projects in there. Um, so yeah, and now it works just fine. I was tickled to be able to do a little test. I was like, yay, I can put the spinning in there. So that's really it for spinning. Um, I have been very busy. I haven't been home again. So, and when I have been home, I've had people here and you really, when you're out walking and showing people your neighborhood because they live in a different place and might be interested in seeing what's over here, you're really not at home doing anything knitting or spinning like that, unless they're a knitter or spinner and this person was not. Um, so, okay. The really, really was me not paying attention. Again, um, the back, I wound up um, you knit it this way. It's kind of sideways, obviously. So it's not much of a repeat, but I, I wound up um, putting it down and when I picked it back up, I missed a row of the pattern and it's a 24 row repeat pattern. And so I missed the middle one and kept going and I was like, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. It doesn't look like the rest. <laughs> sure enough, I had to back out about, I don't know, eight rows to correct that issue. And I never did it again. So I learned to repeat the pattern and what it looks like very quickly after that. Um, so nothing disastrous. It's just, you know, going forward is so much easier than going backwards um, with knitting. 
you actually get things done when you move forward. Oop, I lost the screen. I need to shut, shut that off. Um, okay, so let me review the Noro book for you. I'm not going to go through everything. I think you can find this at your local yarn store or um, place where you buy your books and magazines. But there are a few things that I wanted to highlight which I thought was great because I have five skeins of, um, what's it called? Silk Garden Light, the DK weight one. And I always had this idea that I was going to make a cardigan and just make up my own pattern. And then uh, on a lightweight version, so on bigger needles, but a little bit more lightweight so that it's a lightweight fall cardigan. But then I started looking at some of these things from here and I'm like, wow, those are really cool. So either I'll wind up buying more Noro yarn, you never know, <laughs> or I'll use that for it. So there, here are a few things that I thought were very interesting. Here's this cute little top. Can't see I'm looking at, and I just thought it, and it's very simple shape. So it's not anything complicated to knit. Uh, looks like some short rows going on there to make those uh, wedges. And it just looked really, really pretty. Um, and then here's another interesting little top. Hang on. That has, sorry, um, different types of shapes. And I'm not sure if I'm going to make it, but I just wanted to show it to you. Just, I thought it was interesting. This was particularly interesting with the, the using the Nora for all that it's worth. So I thought that was kind of fun to have those different shapes. And then I like this one too which is, um, again, interesting. I don't know if I'll make this. It seems like it might be a little more complicated with the shaping to um, seam up, maybe, and to get the, all the seams perfect. I think your gauge would have to stay very consistent, which would mean for me to make it all in one shot because you all know what happens when I don't because the gauge goes all off and wonky. Um, this one I like, too. It, not a style that I normally wear, but I kind of like the idea of the panel if I, it's similar to the other one, but with the things on the side. Um, a little too A-line for me, but I thought it was really cute anyway. And then one more is this cute little top. And again, I thought it was interesting. Different, different way to construct garments. So it looks like it's four panels, the front, a back, and two sides. And... I just thought it was interesting. It's kind of hard. I, I normally adjust patterns quite a lot. And when they're in this interesting kind of construction ways, it could be a crapshoot for me because sometimes I can't modify it to actually fit my body correctly. And then I have to rip it out, which has happened to me before with um, this really cute jacket. And I, I might make it again. Um, probably not now. No, this, <laughs> no. Actually, no. Um, I, I was, it's from Interweave. I'm, I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but I actually, oh, where? No, I ripped it all out. The balls are sitting in that little bin over there. It was a blue, it was like eight balls of yarn and I got done and I couldn't figure out how to attach the band. And then when I was trying to take the band off because I didn't like it, I wound up missing, a, getting a piece of something else and then it all started to unravel because I undid the wrong thing. And then at that point, there was just no fixing this thing. So I ripped it all out. But it was a little too tight here and too big up here. And so when things are knit kind of strange, I can't adjust. And so I, I can appreciate them and I can give it a shot and see what happens. Sometimes like that one, I rip it apart and sometimes it just goes to the charity bin. Um, so that is it for the review. It's worth a look. I mean, you know, obviously I didn't knit anything out of there and I didn't double check to make sure there were any mistakes and I didn't see if all the yarn uh, amounts were correct, like had what happened to me before with a Nora thing, but from the pictures, it's an interesting something to look at anyway. And there are things for babies in there and there are a couple of shawls that I thought were pretty. I mean, anything, you, a shawl you knit with Nora is gonna be really beautiful because of the color changes. Um, there were about four of them in here. And oh, and there was some crochet for people who do crochet. And I am not the best crocheter in the world. I actually had to crochet on a Stella jacket. And I can show you. Because, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to tell you about. You crochet around the collar. 
can you see that line to tighten it up because it is rather loose and i tried it on before i did this little crochet thing and then after and it really just kind of hugged your neck so if you have something that's a little looser and you want to tighten it up but you don't want to take everything out it might be handy to put in a little piece of crochet to tighten it up or sturdy up a seam or whatever you know i think sometimes we we knit things in pieces because those seams actually hold structure to our garments and if you knit something that was knit without any seams you may find yourself that it's sagging or something is happening to it and all you need to do is just put a little bit of a crochet in there just to sturdy it up and you're probably not going to have that shaping that's going to go crazy and it took like two seconds to do it's not really that complicated to do it if i can do it because <laughs> i don't really crochet very well uh anybody can do it okay um we are just going to go on to tips here i have a recipe but i haven't written it out completely yet i tried it when my friend was here because i don't eat meat or fish and um, this was a recipe that I made up when I was eating fish. And maybe I can do it off the cuff of my head. I actually uh, took a picture of it because I couldn't record while my friend was here. I mean, not everybody wants to be in a podcast. So uh, I took a picture of what the dish looked like before it went in the oven. And then by the time it came out of the oven, I forgot to take the other picture. But you can use your imagination. It looks very much similar except cooked. Uh, and I'll post the picture. If I can't po post it in here, it will definitely be in the show notes. Um, I still don't know how to edit very well, and I don't have a lot of time to figure this stuff out right now. Um, maybe later I'll have a little bit more time, but right now, as you can tell, I'm even like rushing doing this whole thing. I apologize. Um, anyway, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today is essential oils. And I do have mine from a variety of sources, but when I want to put a larger order in, I buy it from Nature with Love. I don't know if you can see that. We'll go this way. Uh, it starts over here from Nature with Love. I believe they're out of Connecticut. And they have a website um, from naturewithlove.com. And I found them to be one of the most easiest websites to navigate because quite honestly, if I can't navigate a website easily, I don't want to buy from them. Again, it's wasting my time and I just don't have a lot to waste on stuff. I want to see what they have. I want to know what it, it's, I can compare it easily enough. I don't have to click through 500 um, windows to get to what I need to look at. Um, and also their prices for the smaller sizes are very comparable to everybody else. But as soon as you go up to the larger price, the larger bottles, it's even more ridiculous and extensive. And I, they have a nice selection of organic in there too so that's really important and they have stuff that I don't use like they have fragrance oils um, I don't use fragrance oils because it's just chemicals and chemicals uh, which is the reason why I'm bringing this up um, is a pollution that we don't really need so you know a lot of people use air fresheners and things like that I use essential oils because to me they're less expensive in the long run um, less expensive for me to buy. They're less expensive for the environment because glass can be recycled very easily. Um, the plastic things that you buy with chemicals in them are already plastic twice. It's plastic in the materials and then they're putting chemicals in them, which is, you know, it, it's not good for you. They're probably derivatives of some type of oil-based or chemicals. I don't even know what they put in them, but it's, it's not really that healthy for you so these aren't going to kill you don't drink them but they won't kill you okay um and what prompted me to talk about this was two things and this was one i was going to talk about it last week when i went away when i travel i take this lavender one with me all the time not this particular but i mean i have i actually i used up my one from uh, from nature with love but i um i got this at my local uh, health food store and it's a small small bottle to travel with and if you get stung by a bug or if you feel like something got infected you got whatever you can just put a dab of this on there and everything's going to be fine um it's like a mild antiseptic and it it you know test a small piece of skin first and don't put it in your eye i mean you know use some common sense here but <laughs> essential oils are they have a lot of really good properties um I also take a small bottle of rosemary with me 
for two reasons. Again, it's an antiseptic, antibacterial, natural, naturally. It does this. Um, it smells really good. I like the smell. Um, I'm going to tell you my other use for it in a second. Um, and I also have this one, frankincense. I like this one and I use this quite a lot on things. I have a bunch, but I just grabbed these three right now. So traveling was the thing that prompted me because I always take this. And when I travel far away, uh, I also, there are a few other ones that I take just because I'm never sure if I'm going to be able to have certain things with me. Um, if it's cold out, I take ginger, uh, ginger root with me and actually put a little bit on my feet. Not a lot because you'll burn it um, to keep my feet warm if I'm traveling in the winter. It's a quick way to warm up your feet. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's an easy way so you don't have to take a stock a whole bunch of medicines and everything else and you can use them for other things. Like lavender is a calming oil. So you can use this when you're having trouble falling asleep. So if you're away and you feel like, oh, I can't sleep, I can't sleep, just a drop one little drop under your pillow will make everything smell really good and calm you and you can go to sleep. I would test this out first before you started traveling to make sure you actually like lavender in the first place, but it is a, an essential oil that can calm you down and make you feel very sleepy so you can have a good night's sleep while you're away. So because I had just gone away, I was like, oh yeah, I'll let you know what I do when I, because I don't take anything but band-aids and essential oils whenever I go anywhere because it's easier to only take a few things for my first aid kit. Um, the other thing I was going to tell you about um, is, um, I'm just thinking here, I saw an ad on a clip on, on my computer when I was watching a video for, I think it was um, Febreze has this new product out to help you go to sleep or they have a few and they were, they were um, promoting the one for going to sleep and it was uh, promoted by the or given a recommendation by the National Sleep Institute or something like this and I actually wanted to go look up and see if the National Sleep Institute was a company that was made by Febreze in order to promote this thing I, um, if you like these things that's fine but really um, it, it's chemicals I was tried to find it in the store to read the ingredients list but I couldn't even find it in the store and you know, you can buy a little bottle of organic lavender for, I don't know what, $10 or something like that. And have, I don't even know how many different uses for it. And w there's no chemicals but organic lavenders in here. Nothing else that's going to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at this big, huge bug that flew on my table. Um, there's nothing else in here that's going to harm you. God knows what they put in an, a Febreze item and you're buying more of this packaging and it's costing more and it's probably not even good for you. Just reminds me of, um, they're going to kill you. So why not buy the natural ingredients and use them to your advantage? So the other thing that I use the uh, rosemary oil for, and this might be good for anybody who has, um, um, retainers or uh, anything that they stick in their mouth. I actually am in the process of uh, just finishing up my Invisaligners. They're not on right now. I can't talk very clearly enough with them and I can't close my mouth properly so I don't wear them when I'm recording. I'm just about done. I have two more liners to go and then I'm finished. This is my third time with braces. Yes, it's pretty crazy. But now with these you have a, the last set of liners as your retainer. I lost one of my retainers and then my teeth shifted again and so this is it. Three times the charm. Anyway, a drop of rosemary oil in water and put the retainers in there and they get clean. They taste good when they get out and uh, it's a more natural approach because uh, my orthodontist would recommend using um, antibacterial soap and I really didn't want to put antibacterial soap in my mouth. Even if it's a residue, um, you know, after you wash it off, it's still going to be on there. As it is, I'm putting plastic in my mouth, which is not really thrilling to me, but if I uh, drink hot liquids, I take them out. Um, so, and you really, you can't eat with these things on. You have to take them out. So anyway, this was kind of like the equivalent of using um, like a pollinate type thing. 
um, but much nicer and it actually worked it got all of the stuff off there so every time I wear them they're fresh and clean you know what I mean much easier so that's just a couple of the ways that I use essential oils um, I do use them to scent the house um, to put on cuts to oh I told you I made um, lotion hand lotion and body lotion and I use essential oils in there and I use a blend that just Whatever is feeling good to me, I have a guide, and then I, I add the things that I'm feeling that I want to put in there. And I buy all those from um, from Nature With Love. And I made, I don't know if any of you know um, Thieves Oil from Young's. Well, I decided I was going to make my own, and I found a recipe online that had exactly how many drops of what to, to do, and I bought that, um, bought the essential oils, and I made my own. And I really loved it. It's very fresh and clean, and it makes everything smell good. Um, so that's my tip is for using essential oils in place of using chemicals for things or many other things. Just buy one thing to do many things. That's kind of how I am, I guess. I don't like to have 10, and obviously that's me. I don't like to have 10 million things that can do each thing. I want one thing that can do 10 million different things because it's just less complicated that way, I think, for me anyway. But um, well, while we're here, let's just do the recipe. I'll try to figure out where I'm gonna put this picture thing. Anyway, it is uh, fish and vegetables, which I know we have some people that are eating paleo in our group, so this especially is for you guys. Um, I use onions, garlic, peppers, colorful peppers. It's really nice to see green and red and yellow in there. Um, what else did I put in there? Um, I'm gonna put a recipe in. <laughs> Sorry. I, I wanted to do this yesterday, I didn't have time, and then now I'm like, oh, I didn't write it out, and I have no time, so I kinda have to go, I have to get this done. Uh, anyway, you chop up all your vegetables to where they're in the same similar size, and I kind of like the smaller matchstick size because it just, it looks very appealing and it's easy to eat, and so if everything's the same size, it's going to cook very similarly. So I use this um, big, it's a cast iron enamels pot with a lid. And I put a little bit of oil that I can actually put in an, for heat in the bottom of the pan. I put uh, vegetables, all of those vegetables in there. And so it's like a little pile, um, stir it around so the vegetables get coated. And then I place a piece of fish on top. Um, I have only tried this with white fish, with cod. I have not tried it with other types of fish. Um, that's kind of what my local place had that always looked good so that's what I had gotten and this is what we used in the recipe here and um, the piece of fish was about this much I can't remember how much it was maybe six ounces or so this was only one person eating I, I wasn't eating the fish so anyway you stick that on top put a little bit of oil on top, put salt and pepper, however you're going to season it, and that is totally up to you because my recipes are kind of like guides. Remember, I'm not too fussy. You know, make sure that put whatever vegetables you like in there, just make sure they're all gonna cook at the same time, so keep that in mind. You can use zucchini, I'm sure, if you slice them thin slices, you can put lots of different things, and that's the fun part of it, is that you can, you can have the same type of idea, but Use whatever's fresh and on hand and what you go to the store and go, oh my God, look at this. These are so beautiful. I'm going to eat them now. So that's what I do. Anyway, stick the lid on, put it in a, well, I think it's 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. Um, it's going to depend on the size of fish. It's going to depend on the thickness. Um, so keep testing it out. But I think the idea is anywhere between the, the 400 range for amount of minutes it's going to actually cook your fish and the vegetables are not overcooked they're very they're tender but they're still crispy you know it's kind of like al dente so there's they're not soggy um, so everything is like a very fresh dish so I will write it out better in the um, in the recipe section for you okay um, I think this is it I'm just looking to see if that was it. Yes, that's it. So thank you for joining me today. And I'm probably going to move the podcast to the weekend. So next time will be even another day past due because I don't really have the time during the week. And um, 
I might have a little bit more time on the weekends. Okay. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week. Thanks. Hello. Uh, guess what? I went through and started looking at my editing and I realized I didn't give you the peach recipe and I can't even see what's going on here. Hold on. I am going to read it from the Ravelry post uh, in our group. And I also forgot to tell you where you could find me, um, healthyknitting.wordpress.com and Le Petit Lux on Ravelry as well as there's also uh, a button for the group as well. So you can hit it all there on the blog. Um, okay, so for the peaches, cut them in half and she uses aluminum foil, but I did it in a glass dish and they didn't stick, which was great. And you brush them with lemon juice and put blueberries in the top and bake them for 25 to 30 minutes at medium. So I did mine for 25 minutes and temperature did I use 300 and they were perfect. They were so good. Oh my gosh. So give that a try. Those are really fantastic and super easy because you're just cutting peaches in half, putting lemon juice on them and sticking them in the oven. It's like perfect dessert. So go try it. Okay. Thank you.